Today I would like to turn to Philippians 3 and uh, a poem from Seamus Haney. Uh, Haney uh, is from Northern Ireland. He was maybe the best, one of, certainly one of the best English language poets second half of the 20th century. Uh, living in Northern Ireland, he saw horrible violence. And uh, surprisingly, it, it's always surprising to me, it nevertheless saw the grace and the hope and the possibility of redemption in life. And uh, the poem I'm going to read this morning it ponders this idea that we can be one place, but really be citizens of another which, of course, is an idea we get from Philippians 3 that we're actually headed toward in our, our sermon series soon. Uh, Paul says uh, in Philippians 3, 17 through 21, Brothers, join in imitating me, and keep your eye on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. I think of that whenever I read Seamus Haney's from the Republic of Conscience. When I landed in the Republic of Conscience, it was so noiseless when the engines stopped, I could hear a curlew high above the runway. At immigration, the clerk was an old man who produced a wallet from his homespun coat and showed me a photograph of my grandfather. The woman in customs asked me to declare the words of our traditional cures and charms to heal dumbness and avert the evil eye. No porters, no interpreter, no taxi. You carried your own burden, and very soon your symptoms of creeping privilege disappeared. Fog is a dreaded omen there, but lightning spells universal good, and parents hang swaddled infants in trees during thunderstorms. Salt is their precious mineral, and seashells are held to the air during births and funerals. The base of all inks and pigments is seawater. Their sacred symbol is a stylized boat, the sail is an ear, the mast a sloping pen, the hull a mouth shape, the keel an open eye. At their inauguration, public leaders must swear to uphold unwritten law and weep to atone for their presumption to hold office and to affirm their faith that all life sprang from salt in tears which the sky god wept after he dreamt his solitude was endless. I came back from that frugal republic with my two arms the one length, the customs woman having insisted my allowance was myself. The old man rose and gazed into my face and said that was the official recognition, that I was now a dual citizen. He therefore desired me when I got home to consider myself a representative and to speak on their behalf in my own tongue. Their embassies, he said, were everywhere, but operated independently, and no ambassador would ever be relieved.